Hello, my name is Magnus and I am from the Autism News Network and today joining me is Scott, also known as the Godfather, and Aaron and Mariah. Today I wanted to talk about a good childhood memory of mine, Blockbuster. And the first thing that comes to my mind when I'm thinking of Blockbuster is me, my mom, my my older brother, and my sister would go there every Friday and have this one parking spot. We no one would, and for some reason, no one would ever park there. Just walk in as a family, and the first thing that hits my nose is the Blockbuster smell. You know, you're smelling the plastic, the popcorn, the candy, dirty oh, carpet. You know, gas tapes. Yep. That's true. Uh, I, I think a lot of people will just say, like, yep, that's it. We will agree with me. Yep, that's the blockbuster smell. You know, once you smelled it before in your life, you'll, once you, if you ever smell it again, if you ever get lucky, you'll be like, yep, I remember that smell. But uh, today I wanted to be a, a little n- uh, nostalgic, you know, and talk about like the old days and how videos and games used to be acquired, like renting the, the two day rental and the five day rental for movies. And I think like a five day rental for games, you know, but uh, just now everything's on demand, you know, let's say you think of a movie just like that. You can watch it on demand, you know, it wasn't like that before you would have to get in your vehicle and drive to your local blockbuster, you know? And I think one of the, the one of my favorite things that always do after renting a movie was, you know, dropping it off in a little return bin. I don't know why I was fascinated with it, but uh, just like sliding those movies in and the games, you know, was uh, was always like a good experience, you know. Those Scott, things, you got any good memories? Those, any good uh, memories? Yeah, those. I can remember uh, there was a huge story at the local one. They had retrofitted an old mailbox for the movie return before they put the actual movie return slot in. And uh, they ended up getting fined over it because some kid brought back a movie and the springs on the door was too heavy and the kid was too light. And he actually ended up getting hung there for over two hours with his hand stuck in the movie return. Oh, wow. Painful thought. But I was like, oh, poor thing. Hey, Scott, do you remember uh, in the early Blockbuster days, you have, they used to have like an N64, like the Pokemon Snap? Oh, my God. Yes. One of my, one of my best, one of, oh man, the best times going in there with my mom and let her, you know, waste an hour looking for like a movie. That's how my mom was, you know, and I would go straight to the N64 machine and play the Pokemon Snap and then print out all the little stickers and I put it, put it all on my door when I got home. I, my <laughs> entire door is just covered with Pokemon Snap stickers, you know, I'd pay the, I would pay every time, you know, just to get those little stickers. Great oh, times, God. you know. Yeah. Those were fun. I think in those, like the older, uh, I, I, I'm going to say I was very young uh, when uh, the VHS was still around. And man, I, I, for me as a child, I think my mom and my dad used to go out like, bus, like on a Friday night. And then I would wake up Saturday. They would always pick me up like a kid's movie, you know, and I wake up Saturday morning all excited, you know, uh, eating cereal on the floor of my feet cross, you know, and watching a movie like Mighty Ducks, you know. Just yep. waiting and waiting, you know, because I had to wait, you know, our Mighty Dogs, you know, or another favorite of mine, the Page Master, you know, it, 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 and just Ooh. watching, enjoy, eat my breakfast cereal, you know. But uh, I, I think that a lot of people forget and uh, what pissed off a lot of people to say was not rewinding the tapes. Back then, oh. the VCRs used to take three times. They used to rewind the tapes so slow. And back at that time, you, you'd have to go out and buy uh, just uh, a rewinder. I don't, I don't even know what it's called. It's, it was like a rewinder on like speed, yep. you know, I used to rewind it five, four times faster, you know, but that, yep. that thing that pissed off most people back then was people not rewinding and a whole motto, you know, please be kind, rewind, you know, was another yep. thing, you know, one of the good mottos of Blockbuster. You know, it's kind of funny. It's a shame that that went away with, the way of DVDs because in an honest reality, if you forced your kids to rewind when they were done, it was teaching them just a simple sense of respect and decency. That's true. Which, oh my God, today's kids, 
don't have a lot of that. <laughs> Scott, we get something in the mail the next day. We're spoiled. I used to wait yeah. like two weeks to get something in the mail. The luckiest, yeah. you know. Uh, if power went out, Scott, uh, half society would be freaking out, you know. If power oh, internet God. went out, you know. Oh, God. Let's not remind me of internet going out. <laughs> I do Another, not. I don't miss the satellite internet right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another favorite thing of mine, which was kind of revolutionary when it came out, it was called like the Game Pass, where you would pay, I think, 35 bucks and you could rent one game, you know, just one for a whole month or you can return it and get a different one. There is no catch. You can instantly, if you didn't like it, just go back, you know, no catch and then tr trade it for like going for a different one. You know, I think me and my brother, are like uh, one summer, we went to the Blockbuster like five times. And one day, and the lady was like, you guys are back again. You know, we live like only 15 minutes from the Blockbuster. But man, just uh, just going up there in the bikes, you know, and just to trade it in for a different game, you know, and, and having the ability to go back home. And if I didn't like it, you know, trade it in for a different one. That was revolutionary at the time, you know. Definitely. I know there's no late fees, you know, no late fees at all, Scott. You know, I don't think I don't know. Another thing. Um, another big thing was uh, my mom and my mom loved renting movies and uh, renting movies and forgetting about the late fees, like the two day rentals and the five day rentals. You know, you just get up into the register. You have like three movies and the lady's like, uh, you have a past balance due of 50 something dollars. And that was that was normal to my mom. I was like, OK, she would pull out the card and th th they made it so they would get your credit card on file. You know, they changed that real quick, you know. But paying a fifty dollar late fee was actually like the normal for me and my family. Like, ah, oh, I was like, Mom, didn't I tell you it was a two day rental, not the five? You know, just yep. part of the blockbuster experience. You know, getting to the front and the lady telling you you have a past due balance. You know, yep that that part truly sucked. But honestly, that's another way that. Blockbuster disappearing is like the respect disappearing in society. You, you've learned to respect the amount of time that you have with it, or you pay the fine. Yeah. Honest, honest opinion, uh, you do the crime, you do the time. You know, another thing that was uh, good about, West, but about Blockbuster when you're waiting in line, they had like all the candy, the popcorn in the tub, the special movie theater popcorn, make it a movie oh. night. Every single candy you can think of, every yeah. single popcorn, nuts, you know, everything. Little gift baskets, uh, everything. The line is where they get you. You're like, uh, I'm going to need some popcorn and candy for later because who likes watching a movie without popcorn or candy, you know? Now, remind me again, I... Uh Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they have like the Funko Pop figurines back then? But they had they were by different companies, and they also talking about like the Wonder Bowl. Yes. Yep. They, you know, they. I think I think I was reading about it. they had to discontinue it because they got sued because of a choking hazard. Because inside the Wonder Ball was a toy, you know, a toy and oh. candy. And I think someone choked on the toy inside. You know, I don't yeah. know, I, always I remember the Wonder Balls. They were like five dollars for them. Always expensive. Yeah. But it looked like so much fun. <laughs> it is. I, I would always grab one. I'm like, oh, but, you know, but I can see how a small child would choke on a, to on a toy, you know, and why well, they're kind of discontinued now. Yeah. It's a shame because it's another thing that a lot of today's culture is missing out on. You know what, Scott? I'm telling you, man, just going into like as a family and just renting a movie, you know, I look at back at it now, but I miss those times. I miss simple times. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. You don't need you don't need to go with your friend or family like, oh, what's a new movie that came out? You just go to Netflix or Amazon or there's 20 yeah. million other companies now, you know, they I mean, people thought they were saving money when they got off the cable and you thought <laughs> you thought you're going to have to get five other subscription services to end up as the uh, same amount. That you're paying for cable plus a little more. Yeah. It's just the simple things I miss, you know, just going together as friends and family.
just picking out a game and picking out a movie, you know, people don't do that anymore. Even with gaming, you know, everything's uh, There's uh, just straight thing. online, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to talk to anyone in real life anymore. There's no point. There really isn't, you know, you just, it's on the man, you know, everything's online, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's probably a hundred people that'll watch this. That'll go, Oh, what are you talking about? Teaching blockbuster didn't teach anything. Yes. It did it taught many things. Respect, morals, decency. I mean, late fees. What happens yeah. when you, don't, you return something on time, you know, and they got your yep. credit card on file? Oh, they're going to get you. Yep. You're going to learn respect or you're going to pay. <laughs> so I, I, I miss Blockbuster, but man, they would get you with those. I can't, I hated those late fees. In a way, I'm, I'm kind of glad they died, but not, not, in a way, I'm not. Because Block, yeah. uh, Blockbuster was going to buy Netflix, and I think they tried to lowball them. And then look at Blockbuster now. Their entire empire crumbled. They had the chance to buy Netflix, and they should have. Man, yep. oh, man, the mistake they made. The Blockbuster empire crumbled right before our very own eyes to a company named Netflix. And I used to laugh at Netflix because I, I told one of my teachers, like, you guys should switch from Blockbuster and Netflix. I'm like, why would I wait a week or two weeks to get my DVD? When I can just go to Blockbuster and get it there instantly, you know? Yeah. But then, you know, I got into the whole streaming and Blockbuster just couldn't keep up with Netflix, you know? Yeah. It definitely was eventually going to die out. You know, the one section that I always do remember, do you remember the section that they'd have with the stupid black flap with the picture of the bunny on it? That they put over those. Uh, adult section? One second. Yeah, there we go. I always remember Sorry, seeing that. And I'm like, nope, I can't go near that section. I'm I, not allowed. I think they removed that, you know. I think they just removed that, but I just remember like the foreign section a lot, you know. Oh, God, I forgot about the foreign section. I had forgotten all about that. Good God. Bringing back a lot of memories. Talking, doing this past was just reminiscing about the old times, honestly. It wasn't really about blockbuster but it was more about just going out as family or a friend you know you're just like my old friends like back in the day you know that i used to have memories yeah. of you know that's a that's a real the real you know that's a real part of you know what i really do miss you know it's just yeah. part of the experience yeah it was a full experience and you got to do a lot don't get me wrong it cost you money but it was something fun to do and and uh, honestly, it's better than, oh, well, we just lost another child today to heroin. I can't stand hearing that. <laughs> Pardon my French. All right. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and throw this question out to everyone. You know, have you ever had that feeling when you really wanted to rent a movie, you know, and lo and behold, there's none left. You know, I had one, you know, it was Gladiator, you know, with Russell Crowe, one of my all time favorite movies. And it wasn't there. We waited for like a week, you know, just trying to rent it out. You know, any uh, you guys ever have the same feeling or any movies that happened to you that you uh, wanted to rent out and it wasn't there? Oh, my gosh, Magnus, for sure. Man, Pretty Woman was a amazing one like you could never get pretty woman and uh one of my favorites was uh top gun do you guys remember top gun that of was course. never on the shelf it was so frustrating and they didn't have like a place where you could um you know like put it on hold the next time it came in you just had to go back in and try again I think my grandpa would always uh, rent out the alien movie, you know, the first alien movie. You know, I don't know why, man. He loved that movie. And he and they would always uh, he'd be like, ah, they don't have it there. You know, this is back on VHS. You know, he used to get mad. God bless his soul. I always remember um, going into Blockbuster with my friends looking for the first Cheetah Girl movie or High School Musical, the first one when they came out. Um, and they would always be out, but they would have like the second or third one, which we haven't seen yet. And we wanted to start with the first one. So we went back every single day one week until we finally found it on a Monday night. Yay. That's the best feeling, you know, finally achieving the movie, getting the movie you wanted to, you know, when there's like a limited limited supply. Uh, gone in 60 seconds. Was Good the movie. one that was 
that was brutal to get a hold of. And the only way I finally got a hold of it was uh, the teacher's assistant I had in school at the time worked part time at uh, the local video store. Yeah. And when she ordered the other copies of Gone in 60 Seconds, she slipped in one extra copy needed for rental emergency in case it gets damaged. Well, that copy never made it to their shelves. <laughs> It's actually sitting in my cabinet right now. I don't let they, that they, one go. They, do they ever find you, Scott? Oh, God, do no. they bill you? Nope. You, you know what, Scott? You know another hot one? You know a cool one? Uh, when I The very first uh, Fast and Furious. That was another one. Oh, you know, my. Trying to, God, I, trying to get the movie, you know. I was uh, in Florida vacationing when they first got it, you know, on rental. It, it was just gone. Gone, yep. you know. They had so many copies of it. It was a must-have movie in Florida because most a lot of the scenes, I believe, were done in Florida, you know? Yep. The one that I can remember the best of all, though, was Titanic. My aunt went to rent it, and they didn't have a single copy left at 12 o'clock. And this is when they had the VHS. Yeah. Like you needed, It was the two movies, am I right? I think yep. it was the two movies, yeah. And like two VHS movies, you know? There was actually a, co a copy of the Blockbuster 2 VHS set at the Habitat recently, and I was laughing at it. I'm like, oh, my God. That's it's like an ancient relic nowadays, you know? <laughs> it still had the Blockbuster case, the one that split in half all funky. I was like, what the heck is that thing? Honestly, call me crazy, Scott, but I've been stocking up on my own physical copies of DVDs, you know? I yep. found out that if you bought movies from Amazon, they can, in their, in their terms of service, they can instantly take it away from you, you know? So yep. realistically, you're just renting movies, you know? You never own it unless you physically buy the copy, you know? Yep. I only buy DVDs. <laughs> I mean, I do have a Blu-ray player, but um, Blu-ray is a little expensive. And unless it's something really worthwhile, it's just really not worth it for me to spend 50 bucks for a single DVD. So do you have a uh, good collection of like movie Scott? I have a fairly decent size collection. That's uh, good. because That's very good because if the internet went off where I'm at, I'm good too. I have a library and all physical copies, you know, yep. I'm feeling, you know, I, I can, I have enough entertainment to occupy my mind, you know? Yep. Well that, and I have the garages backup entertainment, but <laughs> Hey, you guys ever like wanted that like a movie that I didn't have? So you ended up just like looking if there's like anyone on the on the floor, you know, like restocking it, restocking the movies, and you know, when I went went ahead and asked them or went to the front counter and asked the lady if they had any recently returned, and they would look into like the the drop box, you know. And most of the time it was no, because honestly, I think they were just holding out for their other buddies if it was like a good like a, a new hot movie, you know, most of the time they were holding it out for their friends, you know, or family, you know, uh, you ever, that ever happened to you, Scott, you ever asked uh, the lady in the front or the person just like restocking the shelves to see if they had that one movie you wanted. I honestly didn't have it too much. Uh, Cause a lot of what I rented was uh, not as blockbusting as most people watch, but um, a couple of the, New releases at Thomas, it took them, Thomas and friends, when I was a kid, it took them like an extra week to get them, which was kind of annoying, but it was worth it in the end because I enjoy those the most. Another thing that I almost, honestly, I almost forgot, but when you got to the checkout, they would put your uh, movies in a bag and they would put it in, uh, right? They would like uh, put it behind the, I guess, like the, the, death, the theft bar. You know, yep. like a little crevice, you know, that they would just pass through it, you know. And then once you go through that little, you know, movie theft bar detecting, so it makes sure you're not stealing any movies, you know, yeah. the, the movies are right on the other side, you know. I guess uh, it's, uh, you know, they didn't have uh, this art to disarm the movies on the back uh, back then, so the alarms wouldn't go off. So you just, sl just slide it, you know. Yeah, didn't have the exploding die packs or any of that yeah. stuff we've got today. We didn't have the high technology, you know, you know, how they say now the high tech. Yeah. 
It's not like roses with their clothing and those stupid uh, magnetic pins that explode if you go outside the store. <laughs> hey, Scott, are you happy or sad a blockbuster died? I'm honestly a little sad, but um, at the same time, I know that's the way businesses go, especially pop culture type businesses. The entertainment industry is constantly changing. And I know that in 20 years, we won't even know what the heck uh, streaming movies is anymore. Yeah, and we're just going to have a, imp- like a little chip in our hand and we get to watch a movie on demand. <laughs> That's a good possibility. Oh, it's going to happen. You know, the movie Re- Ready Player One, you know, that's a good, uh, that's a good thing to watch if you want to see how it's going to be in the future, probably. Yeah. So are you happy? Uh, I guess you're like ha- a sad and happy. Me, I'm kind of sad and happy because you can get movies on demand now, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's just like going out, you know, it, gave, it, gave you a ch- it gives you a chance to like go out with a friend or family member, you know. Yeah. And you miss that experience, especially now with COVID. Yeah, Scott, I think you just hit the nail on the head. It was really more of an experience to go to Blockbuster than it was about the movie. Yeah, you were getting a movie and that was like great, but it was really the experience of going up there and, you know, smelling the smells and you had to, you know, you had to find your movie. Remember, you couldn't just like, like instant, like put your money in the slot and get out and choose your movie like a vending machine. You had to actually go to the shelf and find it. Yep. I'm right, right, right there with you. It was all about the experience. Yeah, no, I would agree because um, for me, a lot of it, I miss going with my family every week. And it was like a tradition and it ended up being we go every Sunday afternoon and pick out a movie together and we watch it at night. Um, as much as I like being able to get movies much quicker and easier, I do miss that, you know, family bonding time. Yeah. Oh, definitely missed family bonding time. I do. I, was, I really do miss that as well. What the, it was a family movie night for real. It really let's make it a movie night. Yep. Hey, uh, hey, Doc. Since you're in the background, just listening. What about you? Are you sad, happy, or just like eh? Adapt or die. These are the things that the way things are in like businesses. You know. Um, I I'm a little torn, like you guys. I wish we could have it as an option in the current world, you know, because I love the game of going in there and trying to rush over to the shelf and see one that's getting restocked and then pick that only available copy up of like a new movie. And also it's just the gamesmanship. And then also, of course, when you combine it with like with a box of Raisinets and a Coke, I mean, that's pretty much unbeatable. So yeah, it was like an event, kind of like what Mariah said, like a family event or it was a great couples activity too, that you kind of, First or second day, you know, you walk through, try to find a movie together that both of you like, and you're you're walking through the store together is kind of neat. Um, you know, a lot of times you bump into people you know and j- chit chat with them, and then eventually you get home and watch the movie. So, um, yeah, so I do miss it. I if I could go back, I probably would go back to the world of blockbuster videos. Now I'm gonna have to go to the store and get a box of raisinets. Darn it. Another sad thing is we're seeing the demise of movie theaters as well. After the COVID hit and movie theaters were closed down for a year, I don't think they're ever going to recover from it again after we've been spoiled with on-demand streaming, you know? Yeah, well, on-demand streaming has been great. The other one that's shocked me, actually, is drive-in movie theaters are thriving i think those are going to be coming back i think i don't think we're going to see the total disappearance of movie theaters but small niche maybe drive-in movie theaters are going to make a slow comeback you know i think they're they're able to make some profit you know definitely but like there's a theater right next to me i can tell that's going to be closing down in a couple of months i can think of two movie theaters that are close to me that are 100 closing down and it's sad you know Cause I used to, when the big movie, tent, big tent movies used to come out, I used to go there and just enjoy watching the movie, you know, with the surround sound and popcorn and soda. But I guess uh, I've adapted to doing that in my home. You know, I have my own home theater set, you know, so that's just as nice, you know. The idea yeah. of the return of the drive-in movie theater is just mind-boggling because that, that was like going the way of the dinosaurs. And what do you guys think is the reason that it's coming back? Um, 
a lot of it has to do with COVID. Um, you don't want to go sit in an auditorium, basically, next to people. So sitting in your own car, in your own germs, that's fine. But sitting in a place where you don't know if they've gone through and cleaned or sanitized, that's scary. And people are scared right now. So rather than being scared, go to a drive-in and you can still sit down and enjoy the movie. That sounds great. Plus, it's a chance to get out and you still see other people and you can talk to them as long as you have a mask on or face shield or whatever you use. But um, it gives you a little replacement of that experience. And it's sad to see the movie theaters are going because honestly, I do enjoy going to the movie theater every now and again. I haven't really found any movies to go to see. I'm hoping the new Fast and Furious gets released this year. <laughs> Would have been nice if it had been released last year, but um, we wouldn't have gotten to see it anyways because most of the local theaters were shut down. What do you think, Magnus? I think movie theaters, a lot of them are going to be closing down, like I said. It'll be like a select few, like the high, like the nice in the nice areas. You know, I'm thinking like the one in Mount Pleasant will stay. That's the nicest, you know, and uh, the drive in movie theaters will be back. Yeah, I think there's uh, a, like not too a, a drive through theater not too far from where, where I'm at. And I might even go catch the, the King Kong for his Godzilla flick, you know? Yeah. Um, actually, I'm kind of shocked because uh, the Mount Pleasant theater, I could. Uh, do without i could actually go for the north charleston one the north charleston one has the nice recliner type seats whereas the one in mount pleasant is the old stadium seating and oh my god my back was hurting after watching just sonic yeah they should definitely upgrade the seats i i was kind of shocked by it because mount pleasant's a little more affluent of a community they just need to upgrade the seats yeah otherwise theater wasn't bad i mean it wasn't like it was dirty or anything it wasn't like the one theater that we had up in new york that was uh go and see any movie uh usually w they would get the new releases four weeks late and you could get to see the new releases for like three dollars per person well that theater wasn't funded real well Janitorial staff, um, it, it needed more than just janitorial. It needed janitorial and mechanic staff. It was disgusting and really in bad shape. <laughs> All right. I guess I'm going to go ahead and throw this to the Godfather. He's going to send us out. Here you go, Godfather. Guys, I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have had a blast doing this. It's been a load of great memories really put some positive in my life today and we hope you join us for more uh episodes soon of podcasts uh here at the autism news network.com or autism news network on youtube you can also find us on facebook instagram and twitter thank you and have a wonderful day <laughs>